MTV's downtown is very unique, so it's hard to put into words why exactly I like it so much. It's basically a show about nothing, or a slice of life. It follows the lives of 20-somethings who live in New York City. The main character is called Alex, a somewhat insecure and geeky guy who's got a fixation on a goth girl named Serena. There isn't any overarching storyline beyond that. The episodes just follow the everyday adventures of the cast. Although urban legends are occasionally brought up, the tone is remarkably realistic and most situations are quite mundane. That's because according to Wikipedia, the show is based on interviews with real people. That's what makes this show so interesting. The dialogue is authentic. Characters talk over each other, go on tangents, and become excited. Reference things like contemporary video games and just sound like real people. So me and Mecca were like looking for this club, right? It was horrible. And we both had to pee like simultaneously. We were in sync, almost like twins or something. Well, like we always are, but like we ducked into this movie theater. And like this guy's like, no, you can't come in here. Da 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 da. You cannot use our toilet. Like we're gonna steal a toilet or something, right? <laughs> Stupid. It's a normal bodily function. Hey, you know, I live a few blocks from here. So he's all Just like, around the corner. How do I know you're gonna come back, Missy? Do you have any ID? And I'm like, what? He's like looking at it, trying to figure out whether it's really hers or not, whether it's like a real school ID. I'm all like, you have like no right to be looking at my name. Seriously. So he's all Chaka Henson, and he's like checking out my card, seeing if it's validated. Like, what are you doing? I'm all like, who are you? Like, you're like a vending person at a movie or theater. Like, go clean out the popcorn machine or something. Characters aren't one-dimensional stereotypes. For example, Alex is a nerd, but he isn't a 90s movie stereotype nerd. Conversely, Fruity is a hormone-fueled wannabe womanizer, yet he can mention playing Tekken in a conversation. Because of that, many of the casual conversations don't feel like they were written on a script, but rather lifted from real life. The best cinematic comparison I can think of is the first Clerks movie. Even though the dialogue is prosaic, it's still very well written. While Downtown isn't a comedy, it's occasionally funny. Don't you know that the key to happiness can be found in three simple words? Use the force? No. Lower your standards. Hey, look. It's a window and a metaphor for your life. There are also some great lines and quotes here and there. You gotta make the world nice for, for, for rollerblading and, and lacrosse, huh? huh? Gotta kill off old goat, because goat don't fit in with, with, with your big fake hair and your, your nasty-ass fake teeth and your friggin' little nasty snappy lips, huh? huh? Everyone's gotta join the club. No bad habits allowed in your cork-ass world. Well, I'll never surrender, because if you have your way, the whole world will turn into one great big... Toronto! The believable characters and dialogue just makes the show feel really hip. I must sound really old when I say that, but you can sense when something quote-unquote youthful is actually a product of market research conducted by middle-aged network executives. Downtown feels more sincere. The soundtrack also helps to enhance the authenticity of the urbane mood. Often, avant-garde animations like this have more unconventional and messy visuals, but thankfully, Downtown sticks to classic animation. But that doesn't mean that it isn't visually creative. It uses thick line animation with lots of earthy tones. The art style is very dark and at times almost impressionistic. Night skies are painted in green and purple while buildings are depicted in crooked and unrealistic angles. This show can look very stylish and pretty when it wants to, no doubt about it. While the characters are stylized, the movement is also very well animated and natural looking. The really unique feature of this show is how character ideas and tangents get visualized, which is a nice way to showcase the benefits of the medium in a dialogue-heavy show like this. Oh, by the way, you just missed your friend Lizzie. Lizzie? Oh, she is so not one of our friends. Oh, she's like bottom of the barrel. Really? She's like not connected with reality at all? Hello? <laughs> She's like always walking around weirdly preaching like braver pride, except she never dances at any parties. She's always looking like she's about to die. Seriously, that's like the eeriest thing about her. She looks like death impersonated. It's so weird. It's not like black makeup and black hair. She's not goth, but it's like, it's in her face. You can see it in her eyes and her nose. And it's so creepy. It's like, like death. Like, she's like dead, like frozen dead. Totally. Don't you think so, Alex? Yeah. Scene transitions also happen by zooming in and out of two similar looking objects. I don't know what the correct term for this cinematic technique is, but I've seen it being used in some movies as well. Even though the show was nominated for an Emmy Award, I've never seen it mentioned anywhere else apart from this one blog post. I wonder if I would have even found this show if I hadn't seen this clip linked on a forum back in 2008. I'm glad I clicked the link. 
because this is one of my favorite cartoons. There's just something about it that resonated with me back then, but I can't give any guarantees that others will find it enjoyable, especially since different episodes have wildly varying content. Wrestling fans might be happy to know that the Ministry of Darkness era Undertaker makes a cameo as himself in one episode. That's good, John. Robot foot Oh, I love making freaks rest in peace. I know we had our words, but man, I hate those guys. Adults dressing up in weirdo costumes.